real. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is powerful. He, but he is an individual. He's a person. Oh, my. I guess we didn't have audio all this time. Because all of a sudden my phone went. Boom. Sorry, guys. Wish you had been here. All right. Um, Jesus had to come in the flesh. Remember? John writes and says, that which we've seen, which we've handled, which we've touched of the word of life. Now, one, one reason John wrote that, he was combating Gnosticism um, in the era because the you know, Gnostics said Jesus didn't really come in the flesh. Okay? He didn't really die physically. Uh, it was all spiritual. Okay? And um, so John wrote and said, that which we've seen, which we've heard, which we touched and handled the word of life. Well, Jesus had to come. Why? Because he had to become a man and he had to walk among us. He had to be our substitute. Okay? The Spirit of God has not come to be touched and be handled. He's come to indwell, to lead and to guide, to bring to remembrance all things whatsoever Jesus taught us or said. Amen. Hallelujah. And so he, he's, he's got a different ministry in the earth. He's the revealer of Christ to the human heart. Glory to God. Jesus could be seen. Jesus could be touched. Um, and that's why so many people feel like it was, it's more real because they identify with the, the, physical, the physical manifestation of Jesus in the earth. But we have manifestations of the Holy Ghost in the church all the time. Oh, yeah, I know. You might get a goosebump. And, Woo! and I thank God for the goosebumps. I mean, I, I listen. I, I like that story Brother Hagin used to tell. And, uh, you know, he, he, this woman been trying to get her husband saved for years. And finally, she convinced him to come to that meeting, and they sat up in the balcony. And Brother Hagin had a prayer line. He started laying hands on people. They started falling out in the power. And ah, he's just knocking them down. You know, he's just mocking everything that's going on. <laughs> and uh, now Brother Hagin says, now the other side of the story is, you know, he's standing there. All of a sudden, he looks back in the back of the auditorium, and the glory cloud began to roll in from the back of the auditorium. And I've seen the glory a very few times, but it's like a mist. Some see, see it darker and heavier, but it's like, it's, like, it's like a mist. That's why I don't like fog machines in churches, because you don't know if, you, if the Holy Ghost show up, you wouldn't know if it's the machine or the Holy Ghost. I mean, listen, if it's the Holy Ghost, let it be the Holy Ghost. We don't need a fog machine in the church. So uh, all of a sudden, that man started going. Uh, it's a, and he's an unsaved, honorary rascal. The, so bad the wife began to wish she hadn't brought him. Embarrassing. I mean, it's embarrassing. He said, uh, 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 it's a going all over me. It's a going all over me. It's a going all over me. She's turning around and saying, what's going on? He's, is that a power he's talking about? It's a going all over me. <laughs> well, Brother Hagin said, uh, about the time that uh, he was doing that, he saw that cloud rolling in back there, and, and he got right into the cloud. Praise God. But needs to say, he got saved and healed. Because he had a heart problem. He wasn't going to live much longer. But he got healed. Praise God. Amen. It's going all over me. <laughs> um, the Spirit. Hold on. So the Holy Spirit does manifest himself. Um, now, I... I I, I, we sing this song. If we sing it, I'm not going to stop them from singing it. You know, we've sang it in the past. Um, Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can see his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. It ain't the angels' wings. I see glory on each face. It's the Holy Ghost in manifestation, not angels. I don't care if I hear angel wings or not. All right? We have service. Oh, and we're going to see some more services here. But let me tell you something. 
some of y'all have come the past few years. We haven't, you know, we with, with all the stuff that was going on, we just, for some reason, just it kind of shut things down. I'm going to tell you, atmosphere sets things up, but I'm gonna, we're setting the atmosphere because we've had, we, sheesh, we've had them stacked up out in the spirit around the building. I mean, the power of God manifestation. Oh, I mean, so so heavy you couldn't hardly stand up. I mean, you're just looking for a place, you know, you're, just, you're wobbly. And, and you're, you're still trying to minister to people because you know the glory is there, the power is there. But that's, that's, that's just the Holy Spirit in ministry. Amen. I love when the Holy Ghost does, does those things. I love when it's manifested like that. And, um, and we thank God for that. And we get to have a contact with the Spirit that actually spills over into our flesh. But we still can't relate to that like we would the physical Jesus walking in the room. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit, we're still going on a sense of his presence and not seeing him. The glory cloud, we see his works. See people getting healed, seeing people getting baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, seeing devils come out of, of people. Hallelujah. Come out, you unclean devil. Uh, I had a conversation with my wife today, you know, that the things going on in the world and, and, and particularly in our country has to be spiritual. The evil, the evil that people want to perpetuate can't be normal human thought. It's got to be demonic. I mean, the abortion in and of itself is heinously evil. You keep your hands off my body. Don't, you can't tell me what to do with my body. I can. Yes, I can. Just because I'm not a woman, just because I can't bear a child, doesn't mean I can't have a position on moral rightness or wrongness. Hello. Just because I don't shoot people doesn't mean I, don't ha I can't have a position on, on whether murder is wrong. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, man, we all have the right to have a moral position. I mean, and especially if you're born again, God has a moral code. God has a moral position. And we just want to go too far down the road, we'll be, we'll be gone. Okay. So, the purpose of the Holy Spirit upon the earth now was, is not the same as Christ's purpose when he walked the earth in his earthly ministry. Okay. He, Jesus came to pay the price for man's sin as his substitute. The penalty for Adam's high treason um, that demanded that Jesus identify himself with man. He had to identify with fallen man. He who knew no sin was made sin that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Why? Because through his death, burial, resurrection, uh, suffering, taking our penalty, being judged of the God, being raised up from the dead, this day have I begotten thee. Again, again, I will be to him a father, and again, he'll be to me a son. Let all the angels of God worship him. Because he became sin for us who knew no sin and was raised up. Why? So now we can identify with him in his resurrection and defeat over Satan. Amen. So Jesus had to come in the flesh because man had committed high treason. Man had to pay the price. But only a sinless, perfect Man could pay the price because every other man was fallen and nothing they could do was going to be good enough to redeem man from the high treason. Okay. <clears throat> so he's been revealed to us as man. Remember, there's one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Body like ours. Now his, his new body is a resurrected, glorified body. He has flesh and bone. He didn't have blood. His blood's on the mercy seat. He has flesh and bone. Hallelujah. Christ's earthly ministry was local. He could only be in one place. He couldn't be in Jerusalem and in Judea at the same time. 
Now, he could have gotten translocated from one place to the other, but he couldn't be in both at the same time. Once he took on the flesh, he became limited in activity or movement like a normal human body did. Now, after his resurrection with the glorified body, he could walk through walls. They were being there with the door shut up, and he appeared in the midst of them. Boom. Cool. I want one of them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit, though, has not come in a human body. See, his is different. He came to indwell human bodies. See, we've been possessed by the Holy Ghost. I'm possessed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. He's on the inside. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's not localized. He's worldwide. The Holy Spirit can be here and in China at the same time. And in Estonia and in, 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 in Bogota at the same time. And filling all the believers in the world at the same time. Why? Because in, in his ministry, he did not lay aside. Remember Jesus? Uh, one translation says where Jesus says uh, he stripped himself. Well, one, uh, I forgot how King James says it. But one translation says it this way over in, in Philippians. That he stripped himself of his rights to deity and to glory and walked among us as a man. He laid, a he laid aside his um omnipresence and omniscience. He had to study the scriptures to find out who he was. Okay? And I'm, I'm omniscience, omnipresence, and omnipotent, all-powerful. He did things he did by faith. He spoke the word. Okay? But now that he's resurrected and has the glorified body, he can show up anywhere. Okay? Glory to God. All right. But that was a price to pay in order to redeem man. All right. Um, but the coming of the Spirit is just as positive and just as definitive as the coming of Christ in the incarnation. He's here upon the earth, walking in and through the body of Christ. He is foretold. Wow, we got 30 minutes. All right. The coming of Christ was foretold by the prophets and the angels. Christ himself foretold about the event of the advent of the Holy Spirit into the earth. In his last discourses to his disciples, hallelujah, starting in John 14, run through John 14 through John 16, he foretold the coming of the one who was co-equal with himself, who should take his place. I'll pray the Father and he'll give you another comforter or another paraclete. Okay? Um, if we'll read, read those passages from John 14, 16 through 20, and then through chapter 15, all in, and then into chapter 16, verse, through verse 16, you'll see Jesus talking about the coming of the Holy Spirit, prophesying of his coming. Amen? Um, meditate upon that. God, Jesus spoke and prophesied about the coming of the Holy Spirit the same way the prophets prophesied about the coming of Christ. Hallelujah. So the coming of the Spirit was foretold. Amen. Through prophecy. Glory to God. The Holy Spirit did not come on this divine mission, though, until the day of Pentecost. He had been the divine agent in creation. In the creation of the physical world, he had imparted life, form, and power of development to the dead and formless matter. The earth was waste and void, tohu in the Hebrew, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved or brooded over the face of the deep, of the waters, Genesis 1-2. He illuminated and inspired the prophets of the Old Covenant, concerning which salvation the prophets sought and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what time, what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did point unto, which it testified beforehand, the sufferings of Christ and the glories that he should follow them, to whom it is revealed, 
that not unto themselves, but unto you, did they minister these things, which now have been announced unto you through them that preach the gospel by the Holy Spirit, sent forth from heaven, which things angels desire to look into. First Peter 1, 2, 10 through 12. Hmm. Angels don't understand salvation. Which is why when God raised Jesus up from the dead, remember he had become sin for us, paid the price for man's sin. They saw all this happen. And then God said, I'll be to thee a father. You'll be to me a son. And he's raising them up. He had to turn around and tell the angels to worship him. Let all the angels of God worship him. He had to tell them to worship. They didn't get it. They couldn't understand what had just taken place. They saw him become sin. They saw him judged. And they saw God raise him up from the dead, and it, it, they were just baffled. He said, worship him. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hail the king. We love you. You're awesome. You're amazing. You're the king. You know, why are they doing it? Because God said, worship him. They, they already knew, knew what happens when you just rebel against God. They saw that. Uh, I mean, some of them had friends that left. I don't know if they were friends, but I'm just making, you know. All right. Went over to the other side. I mean, can you imagine angels running into former angels? Jeff, you're looking rough, man. I'm going to tell you, these years of serving the devil have been hard on you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um. He descended upon Christ in the form of a dove at his baptism and anointed him for his earthly ministry. Remember Jesus being moved, uh, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And he returned in the power of the Spirit. I love that. I have a good sermon on that. I love Jesus went into the wilderness full of the Spirit. He came out in the power. Amen. Because he overcame the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Came out victorious and won. And so he came out in the power of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, why the Holy Spirit wasn't given prior to Pentecost. He was not yet given. He had not, he had not yet come in this ministry. That's it. See, Jesus was active in things before his incarnation, but not in, the, not in the manner of ministry when he came as the Redeemer. The Holy Spirit was active. He's even there and anointed Jesus for service, but he wasn't in the manifestation he is now. Dr. Bill's watching. We're getting ready to have a, a, a rehashing of our, of our argument over when the church began. A teacher taught that, you know, the church began when Jesus breathed on them and said, receive you the Holy Ghost. Kenyon teaches, and, and I always kind of care that I started swaying to the Dr. Bill side of the, uh, uh, you know, to the dark side. <laughs> I'm messing now. If, he, if he's watching, I'm messing with you, Brother Bill. Hallelujah. Um, that the church began when Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Spirit hadn't come. And he was the revealer of Christ to the hearts of men. And they were commanded to go nowhere until they had received the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, I, I believe the baptism. The Bible talks about, the, you know, they, they said we received the Spirit. Um, uh, they said they received the Spirit in the same way we did at the beginning. And that's when they got born again and baptized the Holy Ghost at the same, you know, boom, boom. You didn't have, you didn't have a six-month tarry period. So too many people, too many, I listen, best thing in the world to do is get somebody to say, get them filled with the Holy Ghost right then. Don't even wait. Just go ahead and get them filled. What if they don't understand? Don't worry about it. Let him work on it. He's a teacher. All right? I guess Bill's not watching because I don't have any comments floating through the thing here. Not from Bill anyway. Okay? All right. Um, the Holy Spirit, Jesus said in John 7, 39 this, but this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believed on him were to receive, for the Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Okay? The Holy Spirit could not come until Christ had been glorified. <clears throat> Christ had to die. 
he had to be uh, for our offenses, rise from the dead. <clears throat> when man had been declared righteous, entered into the Holy of Holies with his blood, obtaining eternal redemption for us. And, sat, and then he had to come back to the earth and then ascend to heaven and sit down at the right hand of the Father, which where Jesus began his new ministry as the high priest of our profession. Okay? He becomes our high priest and intercessor in a different ministry. All right? Um, the Holy Spirit came. Uh, the object of his death, I'm sorry, Christ came that man might have life. The object of his death and resurrection was to free man from Satan's dominion and make it possible for him to receive the life of God. The Holy Spirit came to impart the nature of God to the spirit, spirit of man in the new birth. Now, remember, Paul writes to the church at Corinth and says, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Now, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist said, There's one that comes after me who's mighty than I. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. But Paul writes and says, one spirit baptizes us into the body. Well, the Holy Spirit wasn't given until the day of Pentecost. He was the baptizer into the body. Hello. So, I know, Brother Bill, we, we, we've had this discussion for years. Okay? He, I'm kind of feeling like that old country song. I was almost persuaded <laughs> to let strange teaching lead me home. I wish he was watching. I would, just, I would I'd rag him. I wish he was here. I could really have some fun. <clears throat> and he would, be, he would be a good sport and submit and not say anything. Maybe. Okay. The Holy Spirit came to impart the nature of God, the, the, the nature of God to the spirit of man in the new birth. And then to fill this new creation with the fullness of God, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Man could not receive the nature of God until the Father had accepted the blood of Jesus. When Christ entered the Holy of Holies, he sat down at the right hand of God. He put away sin. The acceptance of the blood of Christ by the Father signified that man's redemption from Satan's authority was complete. Man now has a legal right to receive the nature of God. The blood of Christ became the real seal of man's redemption. Christ became the mediator between God and man. Man, a child of Satan, had the right to approach God through the mediator and receive the life of God. And now the Holy Spirit could be given. Jesus had been glorified. Man's redemption was complete. No man was born again before, now Kenya says this, no man was born again before the day of Pentecost. The disciples did not become sons of God. They had been called the friends of God. They were under the old covenant. They did not understand the death or resurrection of Christ. They were expecting him to go up and uh, go set up an earthly kingdom even after his resurrection. Will you at this time restore the kingdom? That's what they asked him. The Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost and revealed the truth and impart God's nature to man. Um, Acts 11. Let's look at that one. And I'll be real honest with you. Whether you think the day the church started when Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Ghost, or when the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, which is a matter of days, ain't going to keep you out of heaven. And we're not going to have a 14 week. Uh, scripture wars back and forth on the, on the internet about who's right. Okay? All right? It's not that imperative as far as it's a fundamental doctrine of the church that it began on this day. You know? I mean, it's like years ago we had, we had families in the church that um, competed over potty training. Yes. And I've yet to see a job application when you're 18, 19, 20 years old that asks the question, how old were you when you were potty trained? Because somehow or another it meant that you were further developed and more, you know, whatever, that you were potty trained at an earlier age than somebody else. We get into some of the dumbest things in social interaction and behavior, don't we? 
I don't, I don't call my mom and dad and say, do you remember how old I was when I was potty trained? <laughs> they would think, I don't know. I'm just glad you did. <laughs> Me too. And I was glad when my little brother got potty trained because I got tired of being called. Eddie, I didn't bring him into the world. Not my responsibility. But you go wipe his backside. I never said that. How do you, why not? Because my dad, I've been against the wall somewhere, plastered into the wall. Okay? But Acts 11, 17, they're, they're, um, let's back up. And behold, in verse 11, behold, immediately were three men already come unto the house where I was, sent from Caesarea unto me, and said, the Spirit bade me go. See, the Holy Ghost was talking to them. Okay? Uh, with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. And he showed us how they had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send to Joppa, and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words, whereby thou and thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on us at the beginning. There's my confirmation. That was God going, yeah, that's all right. <clears throat> and then I remembered, <coughs> uh, then remembered I the word of the Lord that said, John indeed baptized with water, but you should be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much, for as much then as God hath given the light gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus, which I, which what was I that I could withstand God. Okay. You know, and when, when they heard these things, they held their peace, glorified God, saying, Then God hath also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Okay? So it was not uncommon in the, in, the, in the New Testament church get a bunch of folks born again, then start speaking in tongues. They just kind of went straight into one, one experience right after the other. Now, now at Pentecostal church, I was supposed, you're supposed to get wholly sanctified. You go to the altar and pray until you are sanctified. Then God can fill you with the Holy Ghost. Our testimony meetings on Wednesday night. I want to praise the Lord and thank the Lord that I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Pray for me that I hold true to the end. And we had 20 people get up and say the same thing. I messed it all up. I want to thank God I'm born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, and I'm going through the end. Want to come with me? Going through all the way to the end. You want to come with me? I, you know, that, oh, these young whippersnappers. Wildfire. I got the wildfire in the church. <laughs> Brother Hagin used to say, I'd rather have a little wildfire in the church uh, than the order of a grave, and, and move of God than an order of a graveyard, nothing at all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Greek says here, when we first believed in their own testimony the spirit um they had believed they never really believed on christ until the holy ghost came on the day of pentecost okay i'm believing believe on jesus all right where is it we got to all right in what instant in the new testament is the trinity revealed to the physical senses of man and that is when Jesus talked to the disciples in John chapter 14 through 16, and he talks about the Holy Spirit as God. See, remember, Jesus talked about the Father. I and my Father are one. I proceeded from the Father. The Father, he, he loveth me. Amen? What is meant by the term absolute oneness and absolute threeness? Remember, we talked about that last time, two weeks ago. Um, threeness is that each one is distinct from the other two, no one, however, no one of the three could possibly be either of the other two, and no two of the three can exist without the third. The oneness, the three are absolutely one. Each one is represented as God. That does not mean that each one is a part of God.
because he is a person. He has a personality. Uh, he has thoughts. He has a form. You know, the Bible talks about God having hands, a face, the hind parts, feet. Okay? He is a person. Uh, all the things we would use, personality, memory, uh, emotion, everything that we define as a personage, in personage, God possesses. Okay? So he has all of those, those attributes that make a person. Okay? He's just a divine person. Okay. <clears throat> um, what, how is the earthly ministry of Christ and the Holy Spirit in regard to time limit? Holy Spirit has one, and he will return to the Father. Christ will come, begin his, you'll have a battle of Armageddon, will begin. Huh? Personally, I, I lean toward pre-trib. I don't get, we'll, we'll, we'll just, we'll find out. When, when, when Christ returns, we all get, we'll, we'll go, was that the tribulation or not? Of course, you know, we're pre-tribulationist. You know, you I mean, no. I, and um, establish his millennial reign on the earth. Okay? There, there will be the battle of Armageddon. And, he, he, and then he will be cast into the pit forever. The lake of fire. The lake of fire forever. Okay? All right. Um where was I? Compare the ministry. So, so Jesus had a specific time ministry. The Holy Spirit has a specific time ministry. Um, why does the earthly ministry of the Holy Spirit seem more vague and mysterious to us than the ministry of Christ? Well, we talked about that. Um, there's not a ministry, there's not a revelation of the Holy Spirit to our physical senses. Okay. It, it, how, how do we do it? It, me, it, it? it really is contingent upon what you mean by that. What do you mean by seeking his presence? Um, we, we, we talk about being in the presence of God, you know, uh, seeking God, coming into his presence. We use these terminologies a lot of times. And what we're trying to articulate may not be exactly what the phraseology we're using. We're trying to become in harmony with him, being in fellowship with him, communing with him. So if that's what you're talking about with the presence, we do seek to commune with him. We do seek the fellowship with him. Okay. Um, if he's omnipresent, you know, um, coming into his presence, well, he's already there. So, so when you get, you get into semantics, um, it, it really because what what uh, what thought are you trying to convey when you say that? And that's that, that becomes the question. And when people use those phrases, a lot of times, their meaning they're th they're coming from a, a vantage point of meaning something, but don't explain that. Okay, let's come into his presence with singing, into his courts with praise. Well, okay. What we're talking about is we're coming into a place of fellowship, okay? We're, we're coming to a place of fellowship. We're coming to a place of communion with the Father. Same thing with the Holy Spirit, all right? Um, however, um, trying to get into his presence like he's over here and I'm trying to get in there is inaccurate, okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you're, you know, listen, your feelings have to hook up with what's going on. They got, they, you know, they got, there's an old song by a guy named Doyle Tucker. And um, he called it Mr. Feelings. And he went to his prayer closet, and Mr. Feelings didn't want to go, so he left him outside. And he got in there, got to praying with God. And all of a sudden, everything, you know, he got into he got into that place with God where there was just you know the glory was there. It was just, just a sweet communion. Next thing you know, somebody knocking on the door. Oh, that was Mr. Feelings. He wanted to get in there. Okay, yeah. So you you, just, you gotta you gotta pursue it with the knowledge that I'm coming to purposefully commune with God. Okay, and, um, and and not trying to get 
him to be in the room with me. He's there. You know, we'll say that. And what we mean, like, oh, the Holy Spirit has come. What we're talking, what we're saying is he has manifested himself in a special way. He was already there. Okay? We're two or three gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst of him. He's already there. Okay? Right. And so that's why I'm saying it, it could be a semantic, a, 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 someone trying to articulate. Seek the will of God. Right. We seek the word of God. We seek the will of God. Um, but we seek after him, meaning we are coming to commune and fellowship with him, entreat him to ask questions of him. Um, we could even call this prayer, communion with God, um, worship. Okay. And, and then there are times... Um, Dad Hagen did a series back in the early 80s, real early 80s, because I remember I had it. It's on tape. I think half of them broke. Um, called The Spirit Within and The Spirit Upon. See, in the, new birth, we, in, in the new birth and in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we had the Holy Ghost on the inside. But there are times, there are manifestations where he settles in on the outside, especially. He didn't, like, he didn't get out and go around and get on top of it. It was a manifestation of the Spirit. It was a manifestation of His presence that you physically could feel in many cases. So, again, we, we, we get to that point of um, having a semantic roadblock as to what's really being said. And, and probably we ought to do a better job of saying what I mean now is, you know, you know, because we're singing songs, you know, coming to his presence, we're singing into his courts for praise. These are, oh, these are psalms. Okay. Well, come to your place of communion with singing. Into the courts of, of, of his glory with praise or whatever. But what we're, we're, we recognize he's on the inside of us where well, we should. And again, that kind of terminology or those kind of, that kind of thinking can make you think he's over here and I got to get to there when he's already with us. Okay. So does that help? Okay. All right. Um, why is it that the Holy Spirit could not come in human body as Christ did? Because his ministry wasn't like that of Christ. He didn't come to walk the earth in a localized circumstance to redeem man. He didn't come to be man's substitute. He came as the revealer of the substitute, the teacher of the substitute, to show us Christ, to bear witness with our spirit who Christ was. Amen? He did not come to be the Savior. That, that role was left to the second person of the Godhead who became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And the Word became flesh, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father. See? So the Holy Spirit could not come in the way Jesus did, because that wasn't his ministry. That's not what his purpose was. Um. <clears throat> He did not, as we said earlier, he did not come to indwell a body, but to indwell the bodies of those who believed. Cool. Amen. No, you're not. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Temple, dwelling place. You know. Um, <clears throat> John, first, John, I mean, not first John, I mean, John's gospel, the first chapter, when he says, and, and, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Father. The word dwelt in Greek is actually um, tented or tabernacled. That's the Greek word. He tented, He tabernacled among us. God put Himself in a body where He could get out of the temple and come in and touch humanity. Lay hands on Him and get Him healed. Cast out the devils. Be in communion with His creation. Amen. 
Uh, and what scriptures do we find the we first hear about the advent of the Holy Spirit foretold, prophesied? And again, that's John 14, starting in verse 16 through 20, and running through chapter 16, 1 through 16. It'll be all in there, okay? And then Acts 1, 4, and 5. You'll receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you, okay? That's John 14. Just, just go ahead and say John 14 through John 16. You'll find, it's all in there, okay? Make it easy for your notes. It won't hurt you to read the extra scriptures. Will it? No. Okay. What was the work of the Holy Spirit before the advent on the day of Pentecost? He was the agent in creation. He was the inspiration of the prophets in the Old Testament. And the anointing on Jesus' ministry. And why was it that he could not come until Christ had been glorified? Because Jesus had to complete his ministry for redemption of humanity before the Holy Spirit could come and reveal him as the Redeemer. It had to be done first. He couldn't, he couldn't come early and do it. He had to wait. And um, why was it the disciples could not be born again before the day of Pentecost? Because the Holy Spirit is the one who reveals and imparts the nature of God into men, and he was not given until the day of Pentecost. Therefore, men could not be born again until then. And um, Brother Bill is probably going, heresy, heresy. He's not, he's not going heresy. He's a. Uh, but he is adamant about it. <laughs> There's only been a, about a 30 year debate between us over this. <laughs> Yeah, but not, not, I mean, it's not hard. We don't, we don't get into it. We don't sit around and go, it's just whenever a subject comes up, I know what his position is. He knows what mine, mine almost got assimilated by the Borg. But I'm no longer locutus. I've been set free. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. So next week we'll get into lesson 32. Isn't that exciting? No, we won't. Next week's our anniversary. We're going to be gone. Okay. Two weeks from tonight, we'll get on how to receive the Holy Spirit. All right. And um, praise the Lord. All righty. You ready to give? Anybody giving with, with cash or check? All right. Then let's, let's just pray for all those giving electronically. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for the givers and tithers. Thank you heaven's windows are open unto them and that you pour out blessings on them. They don't have room enough to receive in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. All right. So glad y'all came out tonight. Sorry the rain came for the youth. I know they were really looking forward to being able to go out and do the real life s'mores campfire thing. So I know they'll get. The, I know. I know Jesse that she'll she'll do that again real soon. Um, we've been in this dry period for weeks. We're actually supposed to be uh, in drought. Now all of a sudden, past you know a couple of days, whatever, we got dumped on. I mean, I came out here tonight. We didn't get rain at my house. Got a sprinkle. Came over here, drove it in the parking lot. Oh, my goodness. I mean, you know, get the canoe out. Get, a, get an airboat from Florida. Let's get up to the door. Like, wow. I mean, the parking lot was flooded. I mean, huge piles of water. So, But it's good for the flowers. It's packing all that mulch down. Yep. Praise the Lord. All right. Thank you all for coming. Uh, again, we apologize to our youth, but we have no control over the weather as per se. You know, I mean, you know, I, I, how am I going to pray against rain when everybody's praying for rain? Well, it's going to mess up our youth. Yeah, but we need the rain. You know, I mean, you know, there's some things you just kind of go. There's no reason to pray against the weather. We need the rain. <laughs> but the youth want to have a, a s'mores thing. There'll be another day. I promise you. Hallelujah. And uh, don't forget, the fifth Sunday is going to be uh, Family Church Day. So we're going to have you know, our service, and we're going to go out. We're going to picnic on the grounds. Church is going to provide the burgers and the dogs. You, my dear congregants, are going to provide all the sides. You know, so if you make potato salad or, you know, baked beans or, you know, whatever you like to go with hot dogs and hamburgers, uh, all that kind of stuff, we'll, we'll get a sign-up sheet out there for that. And then we're just going to have a family day. We've gotten cornhole. Now, it's, it's kind of a, 
a portable cornhole. It's not the, the big hard boards. It's we got cornhole and ring toss. We're going to have a playhouse out here. Karen has one that she's going to let us use. And then we're going to get it set up. So the bouncy house, the playground's all new. We've got all this area. To, and then there is good three acres of do whatever you want. Run. We want your kids to go home and walk in the house and go up and climb up and go. And you're going, hallelujah. You wore them out, Pastor. Thank you. All right. Praise God. We love you. God bless you. You're dismissed. Those watching by internet, thank you for joining us tonight. Remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Hallelujah. That whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We'll see you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Until then, you be blessed of God. Good night.